Yep. We're in that territory, baby. The last time we had made a video about this topic was three years ago in 2020. Now, that's the only time we made a video about this particular topic, and today, because it's been a few years and because we've grown tremendously on this YouTube channel since then, I think we're at like double the amount of subs on the channel now than it was back then, I wanted to revisit this topic. Because when it comes to the rejected trade in the summer of 2016 that could have changed the face of the Montreal Canadiens and the fate of the NHL as a whole, I felt like now was as great a time as ever to go out there and bring this up. Yes, we did make a video about this in 2020, and yes, we're going to be using the same articles, but I wanted to articulate this topic once more because three years later, everything has changed, and I still think that this story bears repeating. Our story takes place on a very particular day, June 29th, 2016. If you remember this day, it was a huge day in the NHL because in the span of about an hour and a half, we had three huge pieces of news. For one, you had yourselves the Steven Stamkos signing with Tampa Bay, shutting down all the rumors that he would go over to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Secondly, you had two trades. One was between the Oilers and the Devils where first overall pick Taylor Hall was swapped one for one for Adam Larson. And you had the Montreal Canadiens trading P.K. Subban away to the Nashville Predators for Shea Weber. Now, if you're following all the tea leaves here, let's focus on the two trades. The Edmonton Oilers acquired a right-handed defenseman. The Montreal Canadiens traded a right-handed defenseman away. If you wanted to connect these two, there is a link to be had. And if you wanted to get into the nitty-gritty details of that link, well, there's going to be another link in the description if you wanted to read this article on edmontonjournal.com. David Staples wrote this in January of 2017, so half a year after the trades were made, PK for Weber and Hall for Larson. Take a look at this. Was the best Oilers deal last summer the one that Peter Shirelli refused to make? The insinuation here is that the Oilers were actually interested in PK. They got Larson, who is a right-handed defenseman, but PK was a right-handed D also on the market. Oilers fans, bloggers, and observers wanted the Subban trade, but not so much Shirelli. This article says that in the days leading up to the June 24th, 25th NHL draft, Shirelli was desperately trying to acquire a right-shot D-man. And at the same time, the Habs were trying to move PK Subban before July 1st when his no-movement clause would kick in. It's unclear now if the Oilers ever had a massive amount of interest in Subban, who was dealt to Nashville. It is clear, however, that the two teams had talks, and that Montreal's ask was steep, but that most Oilers fans were exceedingly keen on such a deal to proceed, from more traditional MSN columnist Mark Spector of Sportsnet to prominent bloggers like Jonathan Willis and Alan Mitchell. That enthusiasm for the deal was there even as the Oilers were giving up a huge amount for Subban, starting with 21-year-old center Leon Dreisaitl. Yes, that is right. Leon Dreisaitl, one of the best players in the entire NHL, was almost traded away to the Montreal Canadiens as the Habs were asking for him in P.K. Subban trade talks. The Oilers were interested in Subban, they wanted a right-handed D. But, as we explore further in this article from 2017, it's apparent that the entire reason this didn't go down is because Peter Shirelli just straight up refused to do it. On the morning of June 24th, Sportsnet's Elliot Friedman said the ask from Edmonton was the fourth overall pick, Dreisaitl, and more than that, maybe a player like Oscar Kleffbaum. Edmonton has just not been willing to do it. I think the big game of chicken today is Montreal GM Mark Bergevin and Peter Shirelli. You know, I think Edmonton would love to have Subban, but I think they've looked at the price tag as being overly unrealistic. This is where you start to connect the dots even more. Because in the end, on the evening of the June 24th draft, Columbus, with the third overall pick, drafted the player the Canadians evidently wanted, Pierre-Luc Dubois, meaning that he was not available to Edmonton at fourth overall. Is that what killed the Subban to Edmonton deal? Evidently not. What killed the deal mostly was just Peter Shirelli's lack of interest. And if you remember in this time frame, one of the biggest needs the Habs had, they needed centers. They took Ryan Paling the next year, and then Jesperi Kotkaniemi the year after that, they needed C's, which is why they were interested in trading Subban away for a guy like Dreisaitl, who was going to be a center, and a draft pick that in theory would have been used to take Pierre-Luc Dubois, another center. Now we know that Dubois would eventually get linked to Montreal a bunch of times over the next few years, but the Habs had this desire for centers, and they tried to address all of it with this Subban trade. 
but Peter Shirelli ended up saying no. In his report, Elliot Friedman reiterated the Habs' ask from the Oilers, a package of players that included Dreisaitl, Edmonton's fourth overall pick, a D-man like Clef Baum or Nurse, and another asset. Friedman then summarized Peter Shirelli's rejection of such a notion, with McDavid's next contract being potentially massive, Peter Shirelli looked elsewhere. The Hall for Larson deal saves Edmonton more than $1.8 million in cap room. No doubt that's why it was a one-for-one -one trade. New Jersey GM Ray Shiro said, I'm adding salary. I'm not giving up anything else. He took a hard line. It's clear Edmonton desperately sought right-handed defenseman help, and they passed on Subban. It was a big price to pay, and the Oilers did not want that. Now, the thing is, it's easy to say in hindsight, oh yeah, Subban was good and he fell off. Why would the Oilers have wanted to trade him away? This is the public opinion back in this time frame. Take a look at this poll, which was conducted at the Edmonton Journal. 1,000 votes right around the time frame of this entire conversation happening. This is what Oilers fans said on the question, would you trade Dreisaitl in the fourth overall pick for Subban? 72% of Oilers fans said they would. And this is on EdmontonJournal.com, this is not a Montreal thing. This is the Oilers fan base themselves saying, yeah, I'd trade Dreisaitl and the fourth overall pick for Subban, for sure. And so public opinion was so different from where things are today compared to where they were back then, because back in 2016, a lot of Oilers fans were just interested in seeing Dreisaitl be used in some sort of a trade to get a defenseman. Dreisaitl had 51 points in 72 games played that season and a stint in the AHL. It wasn't until the next few years where he really broke out as a multi 100 point caliber guy. Meanwhile, P.K. Subban, while he had the really good run with the Nashville Predators making the Stanley Cup Finals and being a really good productive defenseman in that time frame, he fell off quickly and eventually found himself out of the NHL in total. Plus, that contract of his was definitely not going to help. And so while this was an idea that a lot of Oilers fans at the time were on board with, the fact that Peter Shirelli ended up backing away might have been the best move that he could have done, which is why this article is titled the way it is. Was the best Oilers deal last summer the one that Shirelli refused to make? Now, if you go over to just some of the reactions here, there was another article published in that same summer why the Oilers should have made the Subban trade and not the Hall deal. This is also on EdmontonJournal.com. They bring up the idea of trading away Dreisaitl as well, and this article goes out there and says that, yeah, they should have done it. Like, they should have traded Dreisaitl for Subban. And it might be ridiculous to look at now, but you gotta remember, Dreisaitl was not as good as he is now back then, and Subban was on top of the world. This guy was seen as one of the best offensive defensemen the league had seen in a while. He had won a Norris Trophy. P.K. Subban had such an impressive resume at that time frame that even though he did have a huge dollar amount, you could understand why all these fan bases of other teams were wanting that on their squad. Hey, this guy's worth the money, and he can help us win now. Vancouver also had a trade offer in there, wherein PK was almost sent to the Canucks for the fifth overall pick, assuming Pierre-Luc Dubois would have been available, which he wasn't, which is why the trade didn't go through. Of course, now, with 2023 vision, it's tough to go out there and say that Dreisaitl over to Montreal would be anything short but a win, considering that guy had 128 points in 80 games this previous year. I think Dreisaitl, even away from McDavid, is still one of the top players in the entire NHL, and if that guy was sent over to Montreal in some sort of a PK deal, the Habs would still be reaping the benefits of whatever it is they received. Sure, Shea Weber is good, and Shea Weber was really good back when he was traded to Montreal, but... His time was up. He ended up suffering, pretty much playing through the final days of his NHL career, willingly putting himself through a Stanley Cup Finals appearance and costing the rest of his career in the process. So while there's some sort of a poetic ending there, Shea Weber, of course, being as old as he is, definitely doesn't really help the Canadians as much now. They could have had Dreisaitl. Heck, even if Mark Bergevin just said, okay, maybe not Dreisaitl and the fourth overall pick and another defenseman for Subban, how about just Dreisaitl? Maybe that would have gone through. Actually, no, that would have been seen as a huge lopsided trade for Subban back then because Dreisaitl had not broken out in the slightest. You could see why this is such an interesting thing to talk about in 2023 now, can't you? So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What do you think about this rejected Edmonton-Montreal trade where Leon Dreisaitl was part of the ask in a PK Subban trade? It was on the table. Oilers fans wanted it. Oilers fans wanted to see this guy get sent to Montreal. But ultimately, Peter Shirelli said no. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And 
Bye.